Uh, good morning and welcome to this, the 19th meeting of 2014. If I can just um, let members know we have a slightly different format for the Brussels Bulletin this morning, so I'll be hoping for feedback um, when, once we get there. Um, can I make the usual request that mobile phones and electronic devices are switched off? Okay, I'll get oh. um, Agenda item one is to take items three and four in private or committee agreed. content. Yep, agreed. Okay, thank you. Um, agenda item two is the Brussels Bulletin. As I mentioned at, at the opening, uh, the Brussels Bulletin has changed its format slightly. There was becoming real problems because the actual um, template was uh, quite unstable. Um, so they went with a new format. Um, it's much more accessible and meets the Scottish Parliament's um, standards as far as accessible documents go. Um, so uh, we can talk about the format of the Brussels Bulletin after maybe we've dealt with some of the content of the Brussels Bulletin House. Any questions, comments? Do you want comments on any sound delay out or? Yeah, quickly, yeah. yeah. Can we not use as much colour as we're doing? Uh, I don't think that's eco-friendly. Okay. It's black and white, simple. It's fine. If you can do an, an annual report, it can be all dazzling and colourful, but don't want to waste so much ink just for papers for committee. Can you just on the shape? I mean, it looks okay. It's as readable as it was the last time. I find it quite easy, an easy read. Um, the only comment, perhaps, would be some of the graphics are a wee bit difficult to to read in that format. If you look at the commission, the graphic of the European Commission in the appendix, there, it's quite hard to to see that. If we're doing graphics, maybe ask them to do a full page of some of those graphics so we can read the, the text. That would be my only comment. But otherwise, it's a really nice, readable, attractively presented piece of information for us. Yeah. Um, Katie's just informed me that that format and the size and everything is a copyright thing, so um, you know, maybe just using that information to maybe create a different... Just thing. make it bigger? You know, mm. Bigger. <laughs> bigger. <laughs> Apart from the size and everything, it is all copyrighted. It's just a bit, yeah. bit strange. I don't like it. You don't like it? I, I, don't prefer, the, you would, I prefer the last one. <laughs> I prefer, prefer the way they had it before. I don't know why, why the change. Well, the actual template they used for it became really, really unstable and it was just jumping all over the page and it was becoming very difficult to... Um, a... I find the, the whole thing... I have to say that the original one we used to get was far more concise, far less wordy, far, far better than the ones we, we, we... And the things got more and more wordy, more and more flannel, um, I think. Uh, you know, in the last year or so. I think that might be our fault because we keep asking for additional information, to be honest. Yeah, right, you know, okay. We keep asking for more detail yes. on things, so they're trying to maybe just pack as much detail in. Well, they could do with, you know, they seem to use 30 words when they could use two. I mean, you know, that's what the feeling I get yeah. with it. Is that it's too wordy. OK. But, but that's only my own opinion. Yeah. What about the content? Has there anybody got anything to say about the content? Uh, there's one thing I'd like to say Jamie. about the on, on the thing on Russian ban on imports. Um, I had a conversation yesterday with the, the chap who's the head of the Scottish salmon producers, who said that... I, I said, well, is this hurting you? And he said, well, not really, because we're, we send our exports to Belarus or, or some other... You know, they pick up the, the slack in the countries that can't, you know, that can't send... Um, it's all being... They don't seem to be losing any business over yeah. it. Yeah, all right, OK, that's it, 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 They seem to get in through other doors. Uh, yeah. I was rather in interested by that, you know. Yeah. Shifted to supply chain. Yes. <laughs> um, that's a good thing, because it just means that we have recognised an, uh, another... Uh, avenue of more exports. Mm. So indirectly, it does hurt us because we're losing one market, but gaining another, gaining another is welcome. Losing one is not welcome. So it, it, it's been a, it's been quite a blow to the whitefish industry for the, the pelagic industry because they've the, the price the general price have, has dropped as a result mm. of this. But um, they seem to be soldiering on. 
Roger. Yeah, um, I've just a couple of just comments rather than anything else. Uh, those of interest are kind of comments in relation to TTIP and kind of disagreement with uh, Jean Claude Juncker. And I think it remains an interesting subject. And obviously, if this committee is going to embark on an inquiry, we'll hopefully have a much better idea of this whole issue um, at the end of our uh, evidence sessions. Um, the other thing I thought was it of interest in terms of the whole issue of migration into the EU. I kind of read the, the, the uh, section on page 13 on migrants with some interest. Filled me with a great deal of confidence that the European Parliament was really, and the European Union were really on top of uh, issues in terms of migration. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of really negative rhetoric um, merging around about it as well. Yeah. We will have our MEPs in front of the committee in a few weeks' time, so you can, you know, garner some of these questions to, to speak to the MEPs about. Molly Coffey. Thanks, Kavir. Um, could I bring to your attention the item on page three of the, the report? It's under the heading Creative Industries. You members will see the European Commission is, is interested in preservation of cultural assets and so on through the digital media and also preservation of uh, film, old film. Um, as you probably know, convener in Scotland, we've got two bodies that have got substantial and long experience in this. Uh, one is the Scottish Screen Archive, who've got a long history and, and expertise in this area, and the other is the SCRAN, the uh, Cultural Resources Access Network, who provide digital resources principally for schools in Scotland. It was just to draw that to members' attention and perhaps to ask if, if those two organisations could be copied into this uh, briefing to see if there might be an opportunity for them to do some, some work in a European context. And, deploy their, you know, long and uh, expertise that they have in this field. Yeah. Excellent idea. Uh, that's a good point. Yeah. Uh, Glasgow City Council always ha also has uh, a filming uh, section within its uh, DRS department, and I'm sure that a copy to DRS wouldn't go amiss as well uh, to encourage, mm -hmm. because they've been dealing with uh, Bollywood and Hollywood and various other film industries in Glasgow, so I think that also might be an opportunity for them. I'd be surprised if this is the first initiative of this type, even in Europe. There, there must be some kind of initiatives underway throughout Europe. But, so I'm interested in what's perhaps new about this, because yeah, I, I can't imagine for a moment that all our European colleagues have just begun to think about the process of digitising their own cultural assets and so on and so forth. So if there's any further information on exactly what's behind that, that would be appreciated too. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. OK. Jimmy. I don't know if anybody understands <coughs> what he when it says uh, on page 18 uh, taking on board criticism expressed by MEPs this is, uh, Mr. Juncker um, when he gets to the bit he said he could not agree to the proposal to delete the word negotiations and the title of the enlargement portfolio which is spelt wrong portfolio is spelt wrong as this would mean deluding the EU candidate countries. What does that mean? I mean, what's that? What does that mean? Catch up with that. Yeah, that's a press release that was put out. Yes, but I, 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 it, it, it's got no significance whatsoever. I mean, it's just like something out of the blue. I mean, it, it doesn't inform me about anything. Yeah. Oh, so where did this come? Who does this now? This 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 report. Mm -hmm. now, who does it? Um, it it's uh, Scotland, yeah, it's Scotland Europa. Scotland Europa. Yeah. Now I mean I just feel that I mean there's bits like that. I simply you know it's all very well to put it in, but there's no explanation of what they're talking about. We can ever give you an explanation off the record on it. Oh, do yeah. you know what it is? Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Okay. We'll have a wee chat after. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, any other comments? Mm. Billy. Thanks again, convener. It's the, the, the little comment in page 10 there, if members see that. It's, again, it's under digital skills, and some report by the European Commission that found poor digital skills among school pupils. I'm quite surprised at that, if that's the case, actually. And I wonder if there's more information we can get to tell us what, what the thinking is there. I would imagine that 
particularly amongst our youngsters and certainly in Scotland schools, their digital skill level is actually pretty good, pretty high, I would think. So I wonder where they're coming from on that and where they would propose to go to, uh, if, if that's what they're thinking is. So. Uh, it's maybe an EU-wide measure. Right. I'd, I'd <coughs> be interested in finding out just what yeah. the thinking is here, because I don't think that's the case in Scotland. No. There might be an idea just for some uh, clarity, Chair, in terms of which countries uh, are showing that they are behind and whether we are being judged as being behind or not, and if, if we are, what are the basis of that, and uh, address them if need be. It's a good point to, re to, to pick up on. Yeah, let's give it Yeah, we can um, investigate that. Any other comments about the Brussels Bulletin? There's only one thing that I wanted to pick up on, and it was in page 12, the Justice and Home Affairs section. Um, there's obviously a you know, quite febrile debate going on at Westminster about opt-ins and opt-outs and what you know, the, the UK government is going to opt back into. Um, and maybe a wee bit of feedback. During uh, recess, the Parliament held um, a seminar with all... Was it a seminar? Summit, yeah, summit, that's the word I was looking for, um, which uh, Rod and I attended um, on human trafficking, and it was to, to create a coordinated um, approach with all the justice uh, officials across uh, the whole of the UK um, to, to deal with human trafficking. Um, it was a really interesting and um, a, a, you know, excellent way forward for, for working together. But the big, one of the, the key themes that came out of that is with the the justice opt-ins and opt-outs, and Roger, you're probably in a much better position to explain this than I would ever be, um, was the issue about um, the European arrest warrant and the impact that would, would, that would, you know, any changes um, would, would have on that. Roger, you've got... I think you're saying that throughout, <coughs> the, across the board, the prosecutors from the Crown Prosecution Service in England and Wales, the Lord Advocate, uh, and indeed I think representatives of uh, uh, the Prosecution Service in Northern Ireland were all kind of... Uh, strongly opposed to any suggestion that uh, we shouldn't opt back into the European arrest warrant. The other interesting thing about the summit was also the representatives from uh, the prosecution service in the Republic of Ireland. So it was a, a British Isles, Isles event, which uh, in issues such as these, I think you need to look beyond just technical boundaries. Indeed, indeed. That was all that I wanted to raise from Brussels Bilton. Any, any more, Alec? Are you happy to... Okay, yeah, okay. Um, happy to um, direct the Brussels Bulletin to the <coughs> legitimate committees, yeah, yeah, and deal with the points that have been raised from it. Okay, excellent, thank you very much. Um, we are now going to move on to agenda item three, which we agreed to take in private. So I briefly suspend to allow our public gallery to be cleared.